welcome to the AW Services channel. Today's video is window cleaning water fed pole van electronics related. If you're someone that is starting out in water fed pole window cleaning, you would have probably done your research and found out about split charge systems, smart alternators, um, back to back relays, all things like that related to leisure batteries and also the very very popular spring europe limited v16 water fed pole pump controller british built electronics at their finest so really today's subject is when you're starting out you will notice that you'll require a leisure battery to run your shore flow or similar pump to deliver your water you'll need some kind of charging system additional to your van's factory installed alternator because in theory that will only charge your van's starter battery. So you'll need a leisure battery. I'd recommend about 110 amp hours or higher. Nice big capacity, good quality battery. Don't buy a cheapest battery you can find on eBay. Stay away from Halfords, but try to source something local to you via a camping equipment supply shop or somewhere that's specified, spe specifically, God, can't even talk specifically sells leisure batteries of a good quality you know buy once buy quality but the real reason is talking about charging systems for my van exact for example it's a, it's a 2016 plate Renault traffic business I have got a 115 amp hour leisure battery installed which runs my Sureflow pump delivery system I've also got over in the corner there an old uh, an inverter for additional mains power for charging electronics while and go camping so that's completely different really but when your van is running and you've got a smart relay or you've got a voltage sensitive relay which is a split charge system wired up to your van's starter battery what happens is when you're driving along and you've covered a specific mileage for a current rate of time to where your the starter battery is fully charged then it will switch over and charge your split charge battery that only works if you're doing great distances daily so up and down motorways long journeys away from home and return trips it won't work fully if you're commuting locally to clean windows on housing estates you're going to really need to think about an additional system whether you've got a mains hookup underneath your rear bumper of your van similar to a camper van which i have installed for window cleaning but yeah also if i'm doing a big big gutter cleaning job i can plug my generator into my van and then i can power up sockets if i wanted to do something i can charge a phone I've also got a Durite charger there, which will also charge my leisure battery off the mains if I require a mains hookup. Also, for my Spring Europe Limited V16 controller, when you turn your V16 controller on, if you're new to these, excuse the wires hanging, they're only temporary. When you've got zero on your flow rate, press the inner arrow button to battery. And as you can see, my battery is currently at 13.0 volts. That isn't, that isn't boosted by the split charge relay. I'll be completely honest about that. I won't give anybody any false hopes. Split charge systems are only good, like I've said, if you do distance. So what I've got, and it's also a, a kind of a backup because I, I like to go camping a lot. I like to get out and about camping with a tent for a few days yet if i'm out and about for a few days camping and my van's not doing any mileage i would really like to have some form of charging system to keep my leisure battery for my work life charged and ticking over which also means then i've got 12 volt power in the back of the van if i wanted to charge a phone when i was camping or i wanted to have a light or use my mains inverter for low wattage lighting and charge charging phones only I've actually got a 35 watt monocrystalline solar panel. I'm getting a 200 watt soon, but I need to find another Rhino roof rack bar on eBay secondhand because I'm missing one. But on my roof bars, there is a 35 watt monocrystalline solar panel, which is literally 
using strong exhaust clamps to fix it onto the roof bar and the wiring just runs over the roof for now because it's only temporary until I do a permanent install. That there then goes over to the corner where my mains, sorry, my low voltage fuse boxes are and the blue box, you can see where my finger is pointing, is a Victron Energy 7510 MPPT solar charge controller. My solar from my panel, which comes out about 19 volts in full sunshine, goes into that Victron blue box. It charges my leisure battery down in the right hand corner and then in turn provides me with an adequate charge current to keep my leisure battery in my van topped up. If I'm using my van or if it's parked up in the afternoon and we've got bright afternoon sunshine, it always means that my leisure battery is charging and then that will also activate the split charge relay because that works in a two way as well as a one way and that will also charge and trickle charge my van's starter battery. Bit of a tongue twister, um, a lot to say and I keep losing what I'm going to say half the time I open my mouth, nothing new there, quite common when making YouTube videos. But well, that's basically an insight into how a solar panel and a charge controller of a decent quality can benefit your van.